Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to welcome you all to this webinar, Indigenous People and Dementia Assessment. Uh, first of all, I want to inform you uh, that this webinar will be recorded, so you will be able to uh, see it afterwards. Um, this webinar uh, is produced by the Nordic Welfare Center, and I think you all had the opportunity to see this short film in the beginning. Uh, the Nordic Welfare Center is an institution under the Nordic Council of of ministers, and I'm sure that there will be a link in the chat if you want to learn more about the Nordic Welfare Center. They also coordinate the Nordic Dementia Network, and uh, I am a member of one of three sub-networks, that is the Network for Dementia and Indigenous People, so it's a cooperation uh, with, together with the Nordic Welfare Center uh, this afternoon. Uh, if you have questions, we will listen to two uh, different uh, talks and we will also watch a small film in between. And we would like to ask you to uh, write your questions in the chat and we will be able to talk to uh, perhaps not talk to the uh, speakers, but to ask them questions at least in the end of this webinar. And uh, I would just like to start with a short background before we let the, the first talk. I mean, why is dementia assessment so important? And we will hear more about this from the Sami context, but I believe that uh, the start for a uh, for care planning and arranging a good person-centered dementia care, it starts with their diagnosis and, and the first contact with, with the healthcare. Uh, so that's why we are very much looking forward to this afternoon and to hear more about uh, dementia assessment in, uh, in indigenous people. And this will be about Sami people. So I would like to introduce now the first uh, uh, talk, which is uh, Scales, Tools and Cultural Components in Dementia Assessment. And our speaker is Dr. Armand Peder Tegmo, who is Chief Physician at the Sami Clinic in Finnmark Hospital in Karasjok, Norway. Please, Armand Peder. Thank you. And I uh, hope everybody has a fine day. Uh, I will share with you a presentation, and there are quite a few slides. I will summarize everything in the last three slides. So go on. Next slide, please. If you just uh, press the uh, video button, then you can see a little bit about what SAMI Clinic is all about, please. It's in uh, SAMI mostly, but the picture will be... Specialist Somatiikka, psykiatrias ja sorjasvuolas. Tasalaasinne klinikkas erinomas mahtuu saamikielas ja kultuuras. Mifallat palveluusai pasiantteita peruskehta kossi orrot. Min tähälämus parkule falla kuori tervasuota palveluusai nu ollu siitä kuveijos. Saamiklinikkas le kieva hetki kortecis. Me fall at Dervashwada Balvalu said Darpu Mild, Sihki Samigili, Yadarugili. Okay, thank you. So, um, the summary of that is that we have services both in uh, psychiatric healthcare and also in somatic healthcare. And we have uh, our own department of um, um, uh, inter. Um, in, um, inter um, Department of what do you call it? Um, talking, uh, interpreting. Okay, so please go on with the next video. This is a little about the people working in the clinic. 
you will meet some of our co-workers. This is one of the nurses. Hey, my name is Sara Birhanne. Parkan pohtsi te ushalin dappe Sami Clinics. Le eranomash soma barak dappe kodapre Sami kultura te Sami kella kultajis. She says culture and language is this is our dermatologist. She works with the sociology and quality. This is our internal medicine specialist. Yeah, and this is a cardiologist. Here's one of the child psychiatrists. And she works with the language and interpretation. She's speaking about equal rights to good health care. Sami patientet tarpa sittu. Mi tarpa sittu. Okay, and we are situated right below the Sami parliament in uh, in Karasok. So, um, as we go on, ultimately this is a matter of legal certainty. While a dementia examination of a Sami person consists of the same elements as an examination of other patient groups, there is usually a need for adaptations to ensure a proper assessment. Please go on. You cannot see who is Sami, and that this is also the case of other indigenous peoples. You don't always see who they are. Please go on. It's not as if in a classic anthropology that you can easily see that there is, this is a patient with different needs than your ordinary patients. Please go on. It's all about meetings, how you meet and how you greet and how different cultures interact. So please go on. It might also be like this when uh, two persons, me, the one with the Sami traditional uh, costume, and the other one, a Maori, is supposed to meet. Here we have the traditional Maori greeting where you uh, press your nose and your forehead against each other, and you are um, pulling in the same air. And then um, this doctor, that's me, I was only thinking about the uh, staphylococci from the nose in this uh, context. Although I consider myself a cultural, um, uh, with, with open mind for culture. Please go on. Cultural meetings can be sometimes like this steam damper. You uh, might recognize it as the Titanic. Please go on. And uh, as the history was, Titanic hit an iceberg. It's the same way when um, we hit the cultural iceberg. There are some 
parts of culture that's easy to see, the language, the fine arts, holidays and fast festivals, the food. But what's under the surface that's not always so easy to see are the family roles, biases, body language, approach to health and medicine that might be quite different between the different cultures. Um, you can look up this cultural iceberg, it's in the internet, so I won't go into that. Please go on, double click. As doctors, we want, always want to have facts. Facts about the illness, but the patients do not always respond to that. Please go on. The patients tell us about their presence, go on. Their past, on. The myths they have, on. And that all consists of the story that the patient tells us, on. That's the patient's everyday, on. The personal tales, on the politics, and last, the cultural tales. Go on, please. But the patient also tell us a tale with different pictures. As you see in this picture, the tale of the place is like about uh, a nice tall ship, uh, richness, uh, perhaps high culture from, this is from Bergen, and you, think that it's a very developed uh, place. So please go on. But many of the indigenous peoples come from places that are quite different, that has a quite different tale. And they come to us with their story. This uh, picture, um, a typical hunter would perhaps see that it was a nice place to hunt. Uh, and an indigenous Sami will say that it's a nice place to uh, grace reindeer and a nice place to pick um, cloudberries. But it's also a um, picture that tells us a story about conflict with a, with a fence in the middle of the country. And this is also the place where they are uh, planning to build windmills in Norway. So a uh, place might have many tales and many stories. So go on, please. As healthcare workers, we must know that storytelling is a use of power. And the anamnesis or the doctor-patient patient relationship is a power situation. Uh, we are the ones that are taking care of the history that the patients are telling us. This art piece is actually a stamp. Uh, it's a Sami success story where a Sami woman married one of the Norwegian kings. But the storyteller has uh, made a picture of a Sami in the background, not a very flattering picture. So the one who is telling the story is the one with the pay, um, power. Please go on. Um, I have uh, borrowed these uh, pictures from Mimir, a storytelling company. Um, and this is to show that the story is not the same as the storyteller. The story here are the products that the, that the hand craftsman makes, but it's not the same. As you can see, he has quite different clothes and a quite different stature than the products that he made, makes. Okay, go on. When we tell the Norwegian story, we tell a story about fjords, about special kind of chocolate. We even have our own book about how it's supposed to be Norwegian. Go on, please. But it's a quite different story in, um, um, considering Sami people. What is the Sami story? Is it a story of traditional dress, reindeer herding, about uh, souvenirs, or is it a story about fishing on the coastline? On, please. There are different ways of speaking in different cultures. In some cultures, you have the points A, B, C, you only have facts talking about the case. In other countries, you talk about the case. You talk where well, you have a little chat and you talk about the case and then all of a sudden you get to the point. In the third kind of culture, you speak about quite different themes. You speak about the case and the conversation is like a chit chat. In the Sami culture, 
you have chit chat, you speak about this, the case, perhaps another theme, and then you go on and on. And that might be frustrating if there's a doctor who is from a foreign culture. So please go on. What is important for the patient? First of all, it's important for the patient that we use methods that are good, that are valid, safety. Go on. Uh, the patient also needs to feel that he or she is respected, respected for her culture. And of course, she or he or she wants to get understood in his own language. And we as healthcare workers, we have to manage their story properly. On. Um, we see that in, oh, uh, do I see the same picture, defective assessment? Um, we see that if we have defective assessment, we might have defect, defective treatment, and that might also uh, uh, destroy for the uh, legal certainty. An example is that if you are I'm not sure if they use the mini mental state in Sweden and Finland, but in Norway we do. And if we score it too low, then uh, uh, the, the patient is cut off from treatment. An example from uh, use of acetylcholine esterase inhibitors to uh, inhibit dementia. This might also affect the person's right to drive a car or the person's a uh, right to manage his or her own economy, economy and interests. So go on, please. The most, please go on. Next slide. Um, the same test does not apply for all. We need to validate the tests so that it's suitable for, for the one who we are testing. I will come into that later on. But first, next slide, a little bit about the Sami people. We live in the uh, Nordic area, native people, estimated population around 100,000, 70% are living in uh, Norway, and they all have their own culture and language. They have a formal status as indigenous people in Norway. Uh, I don't think, uh, they have been given the same state in other countries. Okay, on please. The traditional ways of living is reindeer herding, fishing in fjords, small scale farming, hunting, fishing, gathering food, recreation, and additional income. Traditional handicraft for one's own use and for sale. Please go on. There's also a traditional red religion that still affects people. It's an animistic um, a religion, a nature religion. Um, today, we have traditional healers, although they usually consider themselves as Christians. They are not officially part of the uh, official healthcare system, uh, but we do recognize them. Go on, please. And next, please. Sami clinical goals are to make sure that all Sami patients receive equal treatment, that Sami speaking meet Sami speaking therapists, and that um, uh, it's available to all Sami patients in Norway. We are also trying to make our services available for patients in Sweden and in Northern Finland. We try having uh, both all correspondence in both languages. On, please. I used the word um, equity earlier. Equality is giving the, the same service for all, but sometimes you have to um, give an extra service to have equal rights. That's equity. On, please. I'm showing this pic these pictures just to give a hint about the stories that we always have to have in mind when we meet the Sami patients. On. So, on please. Sorry, uh, the one with the birds. Yes. Um, this, we have a span from the inner parts of the country to the outer parts of the country on the seaside. 
So, the next slide, please. As you can see, we have uh, just released a new book that is called Enhanced or uh, Utvidet uh, Assessment of uh, Dementia. You can uh, order that from Aldring or Helse Forlag. On, please. In this book, there is a chapter about uh, minorities, and I have written the chapter about Sami patients and uh, how to assess Sami speaking patients. So, on please. Assessment must consider education, age, culture and language. For those who know good Norwegian, assessment will be given in Norwegian. That's the recommendation. But for those with Sami as a primary language, we uh, recommend assessment in Sami, in the mother, mother tongue. And if there are no Sami personnel, then you should be giving assessment through a qualified interpreter. On, please. Use of a qualified interpreter is very important. Uh, we see almost every day that people, uh, that Sami people being sent to hospital uh, must have used their own family members, mothers, fathers, or even children as interpreters in uh, hospitals. And that um, gives many ethical issues. So uh, in our part of the country, we have started uh, writing in the journal uh, that uh, there's a Sami speaking and there's a need of interpreter in the section about family social of the journal. We never say that the patient is in need of an interpreter. The patient knows his or her language excellently. It's the healthcare worker that needs um, an interpreter. On please. Uh, yes. Um, primer or basal cognitive assessment. Uh, it might be done where in the general practitioner's office or in, uh, uh, as in Norway, at the healthcare, um, specialist healthcare unit um, with, with, uh, with a specialist. But in the basal cognitive assessment, you should use uh, mini mental state number three, northern Sami version when needed, or mini mental state number three, Norwegian, through a qualified interpreter. You should always also use the uh, revised clock test uh, uh, with instructions in Sami, or if there's other languages, you should have the instructions in, in that language. You can also use the IQ code questionnaire. That's the um, uh, informant questionnaire on cognitive decline in the elderly. It's a questionnaire that you give to uh, the relatives of the patient in question. You can also use a test named RUDAS. Uh, RUDAS is the Roland Uni uh, Universal Dementia Assessment Scale. Um, it's a culture neutral tool for screening. Or you can also use RUDAS, the Norwegian version or Swedish version, through a qualified interpreter. I, I give my lecture with examples from the Norwegian and Sami. Especially Especially uh, when there's uh, when the patient has little education, the RUDAS is very suit suitable. The IQ code questionnaire uh, is um, crucial to use because you also need to have uh, the comparence, the the relative's story about how the development of the dementia has been. So on. On to the enhanced cognitive assessment. For um, there, you have different grading uh, according to level of education. 
For patients with less education than high school, it is recommended to use the CNTB. That's the cross-cultural neuropsychological test battery. For patients with education compared to high school or higher, it is recommended to use the following. You use the test collection in NORCOG. Uh, NORCOG is the register of the Norwegian uh, dementia. I'm not sure if you have the similar in, in, um, in Sweden and Finland, but it's a quality register. When you use the NORCOG, in, you should use the Northern Sami version. CNTB with scales for correct level of education, possibly supplied with non-verbal tests from NORCO collection, like figure coping and recall. You also use trail making tests A and B, all of these in Northern Sami. So the last slide, please. <clears throat> Summary and recommendations. For patients with less education than high school, it is, sorry, Assessment of dementia in Sami persons should have the same elements as ordinary assessment. Being Sami is not itself, in itself a specific criteria for assessment within the specialist healthcare, but it has to be taken in consideration the individual's need for a customized, ass customized assessment tool that takes lingual and cultural needs into consideration. Healthcare workers should have or must obtain knowledge about the patient's culture, family network, I think maybe we lost Armand Pia there because I think the, uh, the picture is freezing. Okay, do you hear the sound? Yes, now it's fine. Okay, uh, the last sentence, I'm just summing up MMS3, RUDOS and NORCOG test batteries. So uh, that was fast, brief, but you can all, all see the video later on. Thank you. So thank you so much, Armand Peder, for this inspiring and, and nice uh, uh, talk and uh, please stay with us and we hope to get many questions in the chat so uh, I know I have some questions thank you uh, now we will watch a clip from a film the film openness about dementia and it was previously shown at the uh, conference on indigenous people and dementia in Östersund and uh, the film is produced by the Norwegian National Advisory Unit Aging and Health, Aldring och Hälsa and now it has been revised in cooperation with the Nordic Welfare Center so now it's available with texting in Swedish, Finnish and Norwegian and this short clip will show a Sami couple uh, where they share their experiences about the first stage of dementia and how to take the first steps to diagnosis. Laat filmma, la vuosta jettin tutnje käsle demänsä ja tutnje kilet aamahas. Maitte ääreje le aukolas oini filmma. Filmma sahte härhäärä tärbas vuoda parikki käväit, käfas sahte juohki tiedut demänsä olopmuje ja aamahatseje. Ta vuosta smeeska tävdi, ta oli kohti nähti. Ta halki te vu vaadzi hujollu lummas kiedä ihmuhtan. Mun oli rämbuudet, muistin kun tän. Täällä oli rämbuudet, ja tuon parikin. Ja. No joo. Mm. Ja tuon nyt muistan, kun haikki nuo no puudet, kun mun tein järjälle muuta. Mutta täällä oli jo leemässä, kun tuon mm. puhutti rämbuudet. Ja nää nuo haluttiin helsikin. Nää kiitsuovat mieltä maita järjellä. Mm. 
Mä en kyntä hieman. No. Mm. Mä kommun... muistin männiä muistin. Mm. Joo, mä kommun... on paljon rohtu se mun jäädän, että mä en muista aloittaa ne männiä. No nohan. Mm. Tää ei ole ski juokaa. Mm. Ja... Tää ei ole nukkuja muista. Mm. Ja. Joo, ja. Ja, ja, mm. ja mun äälkin teitä kun vihkua, että sen mä niin muistin uudessa. Mm. Mm. Ja, no, joo, mm, ja tämän piirre oli hui vaivi hukmat. Ja lähtähän kalle jo. Mm, mm. Tänne johtakin haalitan, mm. että, että olen muistin muistinut puudessa. Joo, ei ole tämän kanssa. Mm. Tällä vähän joku oli ihminen. Nää lähti lähtivät. Johtakaa kallohkaa. Mm. Nää lähti lähti nuu taapalas. Tää oli taapalas. Mm. Mm. Tää oli ja vuosittas. Mä en äälki me merkkiä, että... So isn't that a beautiful clip of this film? And I think that you can find it also maybe in the... as a link in the chat. And I think that we all need to uh, spread this in our uh, respective networks because it's so important to to get this knowledge out uh, to the persons in the society. So thank you for that. Uh, now we will listen to our next speaker. It's Dr. Eleanor Blind, who is a general practitioner at the Jokmok Health Center in, in Swedish Sápmi, and her title is The Need for Cultural Understanding and resources in dementia assessment. Please, Eleonor. Thank you. I will share my screen now. You should see if it works now. Now I hope you will see my... It's uh, perfect, Eleonor. Oh, thank yeah. you. I can start to make a presentation of me. My name is Eleanor Blind. I work here in Jokkmokk Health Care Center. Uh, I have grown up in Arjeplug. It's a Pite Sami area. Uh, I'm talking North uh, Sami. And I will talk about the uh, dementia assessment and uh, need of culture understanding. And we start my screen now, the presentation, we can see here. Uh, to understand the culture, you need keys. You have to understand the SAPME, uh, the languages which we are talking here, uh, the religion and the, our spiritual world. Uh, and we are, uh, there are four uh, languages here in Sweden, all no more languages. It's we are talking Sami here, and the area is quite big. It's four countries, and uh, we have a religion of Christianity, and uh, we have an all religion. It's about now. It's more culture. I think it's not the religion we have. Uh, and we can see here we have four countries, Russia, Finland, Norway and Sweden, and I live in Sweden. It's a large area uh, of land. It's called Sápmi. And we have, uh, when you t think of culture in this, uh, this Sápmi, the country Sápmi, we have also, we have to take, uh, we have to understand we have, they are, we have four countries. There are Russia, the Finland, the Norway and the Sweden. And, there's a quite a difference between the culture of between these countries also. It's not only Sami. And here you can see the area, it's quite big. And uh, we have uh, here in Sweden, we have uh, North Sami, uh, Lule Sami, Pite Sami, Ume Sami and Southern Sami. Uh, it's quite a lot of languages here. Oh, 
Oh, you can think of it's quite nine languages, all of the SAP, it's quite a lot of languages. Uh, Sami Linguistic said to me, if you are jumping between the rivers from the south Sami up to uh, Russia, you can follow the language quite well. But if you're jumping uh, many rivers up north, it's a quite a bit different. But if you take it easy and uh, climb uh, north part of Sweden, it's uh, quite the same languages. Uh, we have most older have never been thought to read and, and write in Sami. And uh, it's, uh, it's easy to translate uh, uh, information to Sami. I mean, we have to think it's many of our um, citizens here in Sweden can't read or write in Sami. Uh, uh, Armand has uh, talked about the dementia assessment here in, uh, in, uh, in Norway. It's quite the same here in Sweden. It's, uh, you seek uh, our, um, our uh, healthcare center here if you have symptoms and we interview relatives. We talk with the patient here in Jokkmokk. You have an opportunity to talk in, in with me and my colleague Risten Utsi in Sami. Uh, but we have uh, a lot of places here in Sami which hasn't got any doctors and nurses which are talking Sami. Uh, the interview with our relatives, we have a mental and physical examination and cognitive tests. And we haven't uh, any translations to these languages which are talked in here in Sami me in Swedish, Swedish part. I have seen the Norway's uh, translated to North Sami. And here is some problem. Uh, and uh, we assessments of uh, function and activity and uh, driver and driver's license and gun license, which can be a very, uh, for a reindeer herder, very, uh, you call it in Swedish, laddat emne gun. Yeah. Uh, a talk about which you have to take care of. Uh, in here in Sweden, no consideration is given to cultural language in these tests. And I can take an example: a Sami woman undergoes a demen dementia investigation. Uh, the one who does the test has no understanding of the Sami culture and the language. Uh, I will go to the next slide. Uh, and why is that woman's test not reliable? Uh, the woman ha have not knowledge of the test language and she's have a dementia and which leads to wrong test results. If you translate it to Sami language, um, it can be a problem if the uh, the one who does the test has no knowledge about the culture and language, uh, which leads to wrong test results. Uh, and you can't uh, give this test if you if the person can't can't write or read in 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 Sami. It leads also to wrong test results. And I will um, I will talk. It's important the way of communicating, understanding the culture. Uh, some people in the south part of Sweden has and talked the uh, Sami for at least maybe 80, 80 years. It's uh, quite, the language is uh, so far back in the time. It's uh, you can't you can't give it in South Sami, for example. It can be in North Sami and Ume Sami or Peter Sami. Uh, you have to understand it's, it can be different between. Uh, the problem, what's the problem? Healthcare staff grown up in the majority culture has difficult to see in culture differences. Uh, healthcare staff from the majority society with a, another culture background can have problem to understand the Sami culture. Uh, colonial structure leads to unwillingness to understand our cultures. Uh, example, he, she speaks Swedish, what's the problem? Uh, you can speak Swedish, but you can you can also speak, but you can't understand if you understand me. Uh, uh, 
and the sentence uh, it's given to a relative by a health care professional in Sweden. Uh, how to solve this problem, Cultur cultural knowledge, make poor, more people become interested in cultural difference, scholarship to study the Sami, Sami languages, educate to more indigenous people, uh, we need them care proficients. And uh, one doctor said to me, it's uh, very, if you have learned to, to talk Sami when you're old and you work with healthcare, you can um, give some words and start the conversation. It's uh, quite nice, he said to me. Um, and I, uh, I will, I will thank. Thanks for your time and listening to me about my thoughts about this uh, demen uh, dementia assessment we have. I have uh, talked about the Swedish, uh, how we have it here in Sweden. We have not uh, uh, not as much um, money as Norway to uh, develop it, but we are going forwards here in Jokmok uh, with my colleagues here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eleanor, for raising these important and urgent questions. Mm. Uh, so uh, now we open up for, uh, for questions from the attendees. But first of all, I uh, just realized that I forgot to introduce myself. So. Uh, I thought that better late than never. So my name is uh, uh, Katarina Negga. I am originally from the Yulev Sami area, uh, but work as a, a senior consultant and associate professor in geriatric medicine uh, at Linköping University Hospital. All right. Uh, so do we have some questions? I would like to ask Judith from Nordic Welfare Center if we have something from the chat. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, we have um, uh, an important uh, comment, I think, from uh, Margareta Utschek. And she's telling us that Sami are recognized in the fundamental law as an indigenous people in Sweden as well. Um, that was a comment for, uh, during uh, Armin Pieda's um, lecture. And then we have a question from uh, Mirjetta Emini. Uh, it, I guess this is both to both of you, Eleonore and, and uh, uh, Armin Pieder, and she's asking, would be interesting with an example of typical misunderstanding in relation to culture and communication. So Armand Peder or Eleanor, does any one of you feel that you can respond to this? Well, um, can you take the question again? would be interesting with an example of typical misunderstanding in relation to culture and communication. Yeah, I, I think it's um, most, uh, some of, uh, some people think that every Sami is a reindeer healer. It's not the truth. It's a Armin Peder, would you want to say something? Yes, please. Yes, I do. Um, there are a lot of um, examples. One is that our patients experience that when they come to uh, a Norwegian healthcare worker, a Norwegian, no Norwegian cultural healthcare worker, he or she isn't interesting any longer. The healthcare work, uh, worker wants the patients to give a, a small lecture about Sami. And, and they have to explain everything else uh, about their own culture than the illness that they are bringing. That's very common. Another example is that uh, healthcare workers think that is, it is uh, appropriate to tell jokes about Sami. 
uh, to give remarks on the clothes. Um, there are a lot of examples. You should uh, have the uh, cultural iceberg in front of you and, uh, and you can pick out the different places where you have different uh, misunderstandings. For example, relationships to, to laws and uh, relations to what is right and what is wrong. So there are quite a few cultural misunderstandings that you can stumble upon. I was thinking about Amen Peder. Uh, you show some really, uh, I mean, you have done some really nice work at your clinic with this dementia assessment. And you talked about uh, how important it is to be able to make the choice if you can uh, have your interview and meet a doctor, uh, but also the cognitive tests in Sami or in Norwegian. And uh, can you say something about how many choose to, uh, to uh, have the test and the meeting in Sami, a, a percentage approximately? No, I, I haven't got any uh, qualified figures. That's part of our interpretations. Um, research, sorry, not interpretation, mm -hmm. a research going on. Uh, what we see that is, is mostly that patients feel safer when they are able to use their own language, uh, when they have tests that they can recognize. And the tests doesn't only have to be translated, they must be uh, suited or validated to the reality of the patient. Mm. That's, that was what I was trying in, uh, what does the patient tell us from his or her standing point? Mm. Uh, the test in itself, it's not always suitable. Uh, it's not suitable to ask about giraffes if you never have seen a giraffe. It's not suitable to ask how a banana tastes if you have never seen or tasted a banana. Okay, that's an example. I agree. And uh, uh, I can just uh, tell you that we are actually uh, translating the MOCA test uh, to North, uh, South and Yulev Sami together with the uh, Kunskapsnetverket. And I know that some of the members are attending this webinar and we are actually making an, an adaptation uh, just because of this way, you know, you have to name a, a camel, a rhinoceros and a lion. So we are making a small uh, uh, on inquiry to see if they actually exist in the old Sami language because many people uh, don't know the word. So that's one example. And I think maybe also, Amen Peder, it could be interesting for you to know that we are working on translations because I would like also so to say to Eleonor that we can use uh, Amen Peder's uh, North Sami version. I mean, it's the same as the MMSC in the Swedish and the Nor Norwegian version. So I believe that we really can work together here. Um, and, and another comment, one should also consider that um, this is not only for Sami, but from uh, different cultures. If you never have gone to school, that it's not sure that you have the knowledge to draw a picture that you are, a, you might be, you're not so test smart if you haven't been to school at all. And then you have the RUDAS test, the Roland University test, which is actually for, can be used for uh, persons with uh, lower education and all, also patients who are illiterate. And, I, and we are also translating, uh, I know you have done the, uh, the North Sami, or Aldring Helsa maybe has done the North Sami, but we are doing the South and, and the Yulev Sami. Uh, uh, translations, so they will come later on. So, uh, so I think that we should keep in touch with each other, so we don't do the same translations, uh, because we can we can go forward faster. Uh, 
Katharina, I have a question from Risten, and I don't know if it's Armand Pieder or Eleonore, but the question is, can we use the translated tests from Norway in Sweden and Finland? I guess this is for you, uh, Armand Pieder. I'm not sure, uh, I'm not the right person to, to answer for Swedish law, but uh, the, of course you can use the tests we have translated. Perhaps we later on might uh, borrow your tests that you have translated to Ulev and Ariel uh, Samenjelde. Uh, I think so, and I think that uh, these not Sami versions, they can be downloaded from Aldring och Hälsa, so, uh, and uh, so I think they are free. Uh, so absolutely, but of course we need to check that we are not breaking the laws. Uh, was there any more questions? Otherwise I have uh, one question to Eleonor. Okay, Eleonor, I yeah. was, I was uh, thinking a bit uh, about education and training because that's what really what you were talking about, that there's a big need for education or inspiring Sami people to work into healthcare. Do you have any ideas on uh, how, how we can work with that? Uh, here in Jokkmokk, we are uh, making a Facebook uh, uh, in, in, in the, in the, looking if you can see healthcare uh, Sami study. So we have a quite good, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Facebook snooker, what do you call it in English? Looking for more Sami that are uh, studying. Okay, so yeah, you picking up them and see. Trying uh, to recruit. Yeah, trying to recruit them. Yeah, mm. we have found some people. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit uh, unorthodox, but of yeah. course, uh, uh, <laughs> they they are uh, disappearing in the system. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. I also wondered a bit about these language problems because we have the same. Uh, of course, it's not exactly the same situation, but we are working uh, with cognitive assessments and dementia assessment for many other language groups where like Finnish or uh, Arabic and you name it. And, um, and there we, we are working a bit in the same way. Do you think that we can learn something from, from that experience or is this totally different in, in the Sami? No, I think we can learn a lot because here in Sweden they have had a debate, a debate here in media about cultural differences now. It's going on here. I have read about it last um, days here about cultural, uh, cultural differences. And we in, in Sweden, they, we are not so good at differences between cultures culture diseases they call it here in Sweden mm. yeah mm. yeah so we can learn a lot of of this debate debate of these things I think yeah uh, yeah yeah I agree I was just seeing here yes Judith please um, there is a link now uh, where the tests are available at Aldering or Elsa. And there is also a question, maybe the last one from Emma. She says, she's asking, do you think that a more person-centered person care is essential for equity, equity in dementia assessment and care? So sure. thank you, Emma, for that question. And Emma is an, one of my old colleagues, or actually we are working a bit together still. And uh, she's working at the 
migrationsskola, migration school in at uh, the Malmö University Hospital. So, uh, uh, and she has been working with equity in other other aspects in dementia assessment. So, would you, Eleonora and Armand Pierre, would you, what do you think about uh, person-centered care and equity? May I ask? Uh, answer? Yes, I think uh, person-centered care is essential for a better acuity because uh, otherwise, also you always need persons with an individual knowledge and you need to have healthcare uh, workers that have um, and have that. I totally agree. I also think so. Um, okay. No more questions in the chat? No more. So then I think it's time for us to conclude this uh, afternoon webinar. And I think it has been very inspiring and, and empowering for us working in the field. And I, it gives us inspiration and hope for coming uh, cooperation and studies. So thank you everybody for attending and thank you especially to our excellent speakers today. And of course, thank you to Nordic Welfare Center who has been supporting this webinar.